Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today is the big day for FIFA 21 News. It is the ratings reveal, or the ratings collective, as EA Sports is calling it this year for FIFA 21. We're going to be getting a lot of ratings, or hopefully getting a lot of ratings released today. They're going to be telling us some of these new cards, what their ratings are going to be. I've got a few of them here on the screen. They tweeted out yesterday. Mbappe, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Erling Braut Holland. And I'm going to talk about all these guys. And specifically, what we're going to talk about today is also how can you value these new cards? How much are they going to be going for on the market day one, day two, day three? I'm going to kind of teach you guys and show you guys a very important trading tip. And knowing how much these cards are going to go for Early on in the game, it's very, very important for trading purposes, for knowing if you can invest in these cards, if they're too expensive, off the go, off the off the bat. Just kind of starting to talk about that some kind of stuff today. This is very valuable information for you going forward, especially during those first few days of FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. So again, let's talk about these ratings that are coming today. Once again, EA Sports did drop some more tweets today, kind of showing uh, or promoing, again, this ratings collective with the releasing today. We're going to be getting some stuff on this. They keep asking us little promo tweets. To, hey, what rating is this guy going to be? What rating is Trent going to be? What rating is Holland, Jao Felix, and I think Bergwijn. Although we already know Bergwijn because in their video, I paused this right at the opportune time. In their video from Tuesday, they show Bergwijn as an 83 rated left mid. So I'm going to actually talk about in the video today, how much will Bergwijn be priced or should be priced uh, upcoming at the start of FIFA 21. And then we're going to talk about some of these cards as well. But I do think we'll probably start to see the ratings reveal for all of these like headliner players. Because of course, Jao Felix, Holland, and Trent are all part. And of course, Mbappe as well as one of the cover stars. They're all part of a lot of the promo stuff that has been happening for FIFA 21. So I would expect to see their ratings released today. Small side note. I don't know why they have chemistry styles placed on these cards. We've got a Hunter on Mbappe. Um, and then some other chemistry styles, a Hawk on Holland. And then this is another th small thing that I noticed. Holland, Alexander-Arnold, Mbappe... They all have new dynamic images, but Zhao Felix, that is the same dynamic image as FIFA 20 right there on that card. So I find that quite interesting um, as some of the other cards have new, I guess, headshots, you could say. They're not really dynamic images, but headshots. And then, of course, Zhao Felix has the same one. So I kind of find that interesting. Maybe we'll get some more information on that um, from EA Sports today with the ratings reveal. But again, let's start to talk about how can you value cards on the FIFA 21 market, if they're either a new card, it's coming into a new league at a new position, or maybe they got a, a stat or rating upgrade from last year. There's a lot of work that we can do beforehand to figure out how much these cards are most likely going to cost. So again, let's look at this 83 rated Steven Bergwijn card. How much, if, if he actually is an 83 rated left mid, which according to this video, it looks like he should be, where does he fall? How much should he cost day one, day two, day three in FIFA 21 Ultimate Team, all right? And what we do for a lot of this is we use a lot of other examples from similar players, similar position, similar league, all right? You're looking to find some other examples of what a 83 rated left mid gold card with similar stats in the Premier League might look like. And this is the first example I want to show you guys, Felipe Anderson. This is the number one tip I can give you when trying to value a card and think and, and try to ponder and guess how much a card is going to be going for on the FIBA 21 market. I would look at a Felipe Anderson as a perfect comparison to Steven Bergwijn. Now, obviously, he is an 84 rated. Bergwijn is an 83. He's got four star, four star. Bergwijn probably is only going to have a four star three star or maybe a four star two star even which is what he was last year but take a look at this Felipe Anderson starting off the year day one of the web app Felipe Anderson was 20,000 coins 19k day one and he boomed all the way up to 42,000 coins by the time EA access started last year 43k for the first week he was about in the 45,000 coin range and then he started to trickle down as we got a lot of pack supply and he just people became uh, you know they didn't use this card anymore right this is what i would do if i was looking at a steven bergwijn and, and looking at this card how much is steven bergwijn going to be that's what i'm trying to answer here with that question right so steven bergwijn is going to be very similarly uh you know have very similar stats to this high pace 
high dribbling. He's going to probably fit the meta because I expect the meta to be the, the almost the same as FIFA 20 to an extent. So I would probably look to see the Steven Bergwijn card somewhere around the range of like 15 thousand coins day one day two uh depending on pack weight of course and stuff like that um and what other if there's any spurs card like if a lucas mora um or you know maybe a hoibier the hoibier card that comes out for spurs if there's any big time cards that link to spurs sissoko and dombele are probably going to be players used a decent amount in the start of fiva 21 that could rise the value of somebody like steven bergwijn and his 83 to left mid card so that's something to think about as well. But I would expect Steven Bergwijn, looking at this Felipe Anderson graph, I would expect Bergwijn to be somewhere within the like 15K to 20K range first day, and then probably rising up somewhere between the 30 and 40,000 coin range at his absolute peak. Because there's not a ton of left mids in the Premier League, right? Why did Felipe Anderson rise this much? Okay, he's Brazilian for one, he's Premier League for two, four star, four star, and he's pacey, right? And this is a card that... Most people can afford starting off at the beginning of FIFA 20, or last year they could. That's why I think this card rose so much. I can see Bergwijn rising a very similar amount because of the Tottenham links to meta players in the game. And of course, Premier League left mids starting the year. Who do we have? We no longer have Leroy Sané in the Prem. We still have Felipe Anderson. We now have Bergwijn. We have Sadio Mane. And I'm probably missing a couple other ones. Uh, there's a lot of them on the, like, you know, the 78 to 82 rated tier. Um, but... There's not as many in kind of the upper tier, right? And that's why you have a guy like Felipe Anderson rising up this much because somebody maybe starts the game playing a Ryan Frazier at left wing last year, but then they want to upgrade a Felipe Anderson. Well, instead of a 2,000 coin Ryan Frazier, they're bumping up to a 40,000 coin Felipe Anderson. So that's where I think you would see a Steven Bergwijn priced this year. Again, last year, you, you can also look at the card's value last year as somewhat of a gauge of what the card could be this year. Last year, Steven Bergwijn was 2,000 coins, but he was in a different league, different position. I don't expect his card to be anywhere near 2,000 coins this year. Usually when people get transferred to the Prem, boost their rating up a little bit, especially if they had a couple decent games with that Premier League side if they were transferred before the end of the year, like Steven Bergwijn was. So that's going to be an interesting one to look at and to, to watch right there with Steven Bergwijn and his price. But that's kind of the gist of what I'm talking about with these cards and how can you value them day one. But let's move on to another example and talk about this a little bit further. All right. The next example is going to be er Erling Braut Holland. Okay. This is the my man that we are going to be looking at. First of all, I don't even think we know what his rating is going to be this year. If I had to give you a fearless forecast on what Holland's rating would be, he started as a 73, got boosted to a 79, and his first inform was an 82, and he also had an 84 rated inform. In years past, what EA had done with upgrades is they usually had upgraded cards to their first inform from the previous year. If you actually go back and look, that was a pretty common trend in like FIFA 19. I even think FIFA 20, it was common as well. I would not be surprised with the Dortmund hype, with how well Holland performed later on in the year, that, or later on in the season this past season um, at Dortmund. I would not be surprised if this is an 82, 83, or even 84 rated card. And this is where it gets interesting. Let's look at Bundesliga strikers, right? Let's say you want to start off with a Bundesliga team in FIFA 21. What are your options in that striker category? Timo Werner is a big time exit from this category. You know, when you talk about the top two in terms of FIFA, the most elite Bundesliga strikers in the game, it's always been Lewandowski and Timo Werner. But Timo Werner is now in the Premier League at Chelsea. And I think that number two guy that's going to slot in behind Lewandowski as the second best striker in the Bundesliga is going to be this Erling Braut Holland card, whatever he is rated this year, even if it's only 82 or 83 rated. I mean, look at this 82 rated card. You give a base card in FIFA Ultimate Team those stats right there. And that's going to be a card a lot of people want to use. Even with a three-star weak foot and a three-star skill moves, he's got the hype, of course, Dortmund. You know, he's been playing very well. He's going to have a lot of links to his card with a lot of guys like Delaney, like Sancho, um, if he doesn't get transferred to United. Um, Marco Royce, uh, Brandt as a, as a starting player that might be pretty good. Of course, now um, you've got some other wingers and some other midfielders that you could link um, Holland to that are from Dortmund. Uh, there would be nice links to those cards or to his card. 
And that again, the biggest thing here is the gaping hole that we have as an elite striker in the Bundesliga. So yes, of course, there could be some other guys that get upgraded in here. I don't know if Playa deserves an upgrade or if Kramerich deserves an upgrade or Voland or any of these guys. Um, but I would be, I would guess that Erling Brown Holland is going to be the number two striker in the Bundesliga, and that's going to make his card look a lot different this year. Of course, we can't look at his card from last year because he got such a big upgrade. We don't have anything to look at from last year, but let's look at Timo Werner as maybe some sort of a comparison for what Holland could be this year. Now, of course, Holland is not going to have the pace that Timo Werner had, and pace is huge early on in FIFA Altman team. It's massive, right? If you have 90 plus pace, that's going to add a lot of value to your card instantly because people are going for pace right away, trying to outrun those slower center backs that are brand new in the game. So last year, Timo Werner was 22,000 coins day one, skyrocketed all the way up to around 55 to 60,000 coins in the first couple weeks of the web app uh, of EA Access and the first couple weeks of the game one of the first weekend leagues here, it looks like, after rewards on a Thursday, 56, 57,000 coins for Team Over and right there. So his price doubled in that sense. Um, do I think Erling Brown Holland's card is going to be 22,000 coins off the rip this year? If he's 82 rated, I do not think so. I don't think this card is an 82 rated card. Would be, you know, it could be maybe 15,000 coins. Maybe edging closer to 20,000 coins, but I don't expect an 82 rated card, especially if he's still only three star, three star, and he doesn't have the best links. I know he's got Dortmund links, but he's not German, and that hinders him a little bit. Um, I just don't think he would be that expensive off the rip. And of course, he's going to have a decent amount of pack supply. Werner's cards are always really rare. For whatever reason, his informs, his team of the season, his special cards are always very rare. He's always got a rare kind of pack weight around his card, which is interesting. Um, but again, I think you'll see an, a, a Holland card probably somewhere in like the 10 to 15k range rise up into like the 25 to 30k range. I don't even know if he goes much higher than that, though, unless EA gave him a huge stat boost and they give him um, a skill move boost or a weak foot boost as well. Um, but the thing that still interests me about this card is the fact that there are just so few strikers in the Bundesliga that are at that elite level to start off the game uh, or even like a usable level to start off the game in the first couple of weeks. That's why I kind of like this Holland card as a definite rise early on in FIFA 20, but it's going to be tough to really value his price and see where he is at in the game this is the last card i want to talk about actually i might talk about two more really fast but mbappe how much is mbappe going to cost this year off the rip let's say and this is my pure speculation mbappe was an 89 rated card last year to start off fifa 20. since he is the cover star this year i would not be surprised if Mbappe is a 90 or even a 91 rated card, I do think he will get a bump up as the cover star. EA treat the cover stars nicely. Of course, he's probably going to be in some of the promotional content. His first in form is 90 rated. I could see him being 90 rated, even 91 if EA really want to give him the juice. Um, but of course, the, if the meta is going to be similar to last year in FIFA 20, this kind of card is going to be very OP. Of course, as always, he was 600,000 coins day one, and by day three, he was already up to 1.1 million coins. Kind of came back down for the start of the game, about 100K, and then actually about 200K, and then he kind of rose back up slowly as we got towards Black Friday. People got more coins. They were able to buy up this more high-tier um, meta card as they got more coins and were able to buy cards like this for their teams if i had to drop a price on mbappe this year uh i think he starts off somewhere around the range of honestly 750 to 800k and he goes over a mil very quickly if he's even higher rated that means less supply for his card on the market uh of course it's hard to pack mbappe anyway but that's going to mean even more people are wanting this card this year in FIFA 21 because they played with him so much last year in FIFA 20. They're just used to him, used to his player build. Of course, if he's the cover star, that adds some hype to him as well. I would not be surprised if this is a 750,000 coin card day one, rising up over to a million very quickly. Maybe even going to like 1.25 um, at some point uh, this year in the first couple weeks of FIFA Ultimate Team. And the last card that I want to point out very quickly is Jao Felix. I don't know if any of you guys remember this card from last year. Let's take a quick peek, right? Jao Felix's gold card at the beginning of the year last year was extinct 
at 10,000 coins. Price ranges are something that you have to be very, very careful with at the start of the game because you can see here he was basically extinct for 10k for the first week he got that price range update to about 25,000 coins then the full game was released we had weekend league rewards and we had a bunch of stuff come out in terms of packs i think that actually might have been the scream promo that happened kind of uh in there as well and this was just an 80 rated card that just got absolutely blitzed right he was really hyped up again and then he, obviously it's 80 rated so that card is just going to get supplied 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 and it's going to drop a ton which is exactly what he did so in a matter of a month he started extinct at 10k went to 25,000 coins and then went all the way back down to 1600 coins all in the span of a month for a new 80 rated kind of hyped up player right so that's going to be very interesting to watch this year um, with some of these cards, their ratings, of course. But hopefully this video gave you some insight on how you can kind of judge the price of these cards based on how rare that position is in league, what other players are around them in that league that people would want to use in their squads and what stats, if one card has better stats than the other, that's going to give that player more value. He's going to cost more coins. And of course, what does it mean for somebody who is a new transfer with a new rating upgrade or maybe with some just some extra hype coming in from the prior year? And again, we're going to talk about all this stuff continuing on through the next couple weeks as we get into FIFA 21. But I wanted to bring you guys this video today, the day of the ratings release, the ratings collective on EA's Twitter. So stay tuned today. I believe it is 4 p.m. UK time today on Thursday. Keep a watch on EA's Twitter. They're probably going to start releasing some stuff and they're going to start releasing the ratings of some cards in FIFA 21. So the hype continues to build, boys. But hopefully this video was a good one for you today. Hopefully you took something from it. If you did, smash a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.